Dear friends, today is the 22nd of August and uh, we've just passed the Independence Day and we're looking forward for India to come forward, to take off, to become the super nation, the superpower that she deserves to be. What I would like to say today is uh, what for me is Indianness. You know, there are many books that have been written about what is it to being an Indian, the idea of India. But I have my personal views. Today, India is not innovative. Indians have become the best copiers in the world. If you see Bollywood, you know, Bollywood copies scene by scene, dialogue by dialogue, frame by frame, Western films. There is no innovation in India. You know? Whereas in the ancient times, you know, even till the Mughals, you know, India was considered, you know, a country where so many things were invented from mathematics to, you know, chess and astrophysics, you know, Indian astrophysicists were among the best in the world, the astronomers, the French used to quote Indian astronomy up to the 18th century. So India was a country of innovation. Today, because of colonization, because of the invasions, because of so much trouble that has come to India, India has lost that imagination, that power of innovation. Why? If you see your schools today, your universities, what you're doing is that you produce clones, you know. You only teach them Western values, Western literature, Western mathematics, you know, Western heroes. And as a result, your students, you know, however brilliant they are, you know, are just copiers. And they're good for export. Most of them, including, you know, the children of the BGP and the RSS even, you know, go abroad to universities and eventually settle there, have children. These children become totally American or British or Canadian. And they're lost to India and they're lost to themselves. Now, what is Indianness? The first quality of Indianness is to know about your own culture. Your own heroes like Shivaji Maharaj, Maharana Pratap, were not considered great by your own, you know, history books. Your own poets, Kalidasa is probably one of the greatest poets ever in the world, you know, on par with Homer, on par with Shakespeare, you know, even today, translated from the Sanskrit to English, you can see the power of Kalidasa, but is Kalidasa taught in Indian schools? Not at all. Your philosophers, you know, you have great, I mean, the Advaita philosophy, the Buddhist philosophy, were among the greatest in the world. Not only they're not taught in the West, but they're not even taught in India. You have contemporary philosophers like Sri Aurobindo, you know, whose uh, books, you know, the foundations of Indian culture, the life divine, the synthesis of yoga, are among the greatest in philosophy. And yet, Sri Aurobindo is not part of the curriculum. You know. So, you are bringing up children, you are not aware of their roots, not aware of their history, the good and the bad, because they are not aware also that the greatest holocaust ever you know, in the history of humanity, that of the Hindus. You know? From the Hindu Kush till Mumbai, 2011, it has been estimated that, you know, the number of uh, Hindus killed is at least 100 million. It's a huge, huge number, more than the Jews, more than the Armenians, more than anybody. So, even the dark side of Indian history is not known by your children. As a result, your children, they're not Indian. You know, they might have some love for Bollywood, they might, you know, have a little bit of pride for cricket, but this is not Indianness. You know? The first quality to be Indian is to know about your roots. As a Frenchman, I know about Napoleon, the great warrior. I, name, I, I know my great poets. I'm taught in school, you know, from kindergarten onwards, who my great warrior. So I grew up proud to be a French. So Indians today are not proud to be Indian. Hence, you know, they do badly in Olympics. You know, the fact that Indians do so badly in Olympics is also because they like nationalism, they like roots, you know, they like the feeling of being proud to be Indian. So this is a great lacuna in Indian education. What is the second quality about Indianness? Is to know about your spirituality. Indian spirituality is probably the most ancient and the last alive in the world today. You know? the, in India, 
people still know what is death, what is life, what is rebirth, what is karma, what is dharma, how the divine manifests himself or herself at different times under different names, which is the concept of the avatar and which is why Hindus, you know, are able to worship the Christ, Buddha, Mohammed, Krishna. This is unique in the world. You know. Who am I? You know, that question has been lost. It used to be known in Egypt, in Greece, Mesopotamia. You know. Today, people don't know anymore. They think there's only one life and then you go to hell or heaven or if you blow yourself up, you get 27 virgins, all, you know, ignorance. So that knowledge is still alive and present in India and there are tools to that knowledge. You know. Pranayama, you know, the science of the breath, to make yourself feel better, to get a better mind, to get a better body through certain exercises. This is a very valuable tool which should be taught in school. From kindergarten onwards, there are simple pranayama that children can learn. The Art of Living Foundation of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar has such courses for children, you know, for adolescents, you know, which give them a tool to be, you know, better people later in life, you know. Meditation. The art of meditation, which is very logical and very beautiful, you know, observing your breath in the nostrils, repeating the name of your God in your heart, you know, these are simple tools which should be incorporated into Indian education. Then you will produce Indians who are aware of their greatness, you know, and who would be proud to be Indian and would excel in business, in sports, you know, in government. But today, the Nehruvian, the, you know, what Nehru did is that he scrapped all this. You know? And the Nehruvian legacy is a very heavy legacy to, to bear for India. You know? it's a, and it'll take many, many more years to, to be rid of. But the effort has to start now. Be Indian. Be proud to be Indian, you know. Do something for your country. This is a great country. It needs you, you know. It needs your Indianness. Thank you and have a good day.